Hi everyone! Welcome to another Scientific Friday! I am Teacher Janelle and I'm on a journey again to help you understand the different things around us. Ready to join? Come and let's see how science is everywhere! Let us find out what scientific concept we are going to learn today. Try touching your head. Try feeling your heartbeat. And also, try stretching your body. Hmm. Do you now have an idea of what our topic will be? Let's see if you're right! Today, we are going to talk about the different systems that work together to help our body perform various tasks. Were you able to guess that right? I hope you did! But first, kids! we will discover the following. First, what are the different systems inside our body? Second, how do these systems in our body work? Lastly, how do our body systems work together to perform our everyday tasks? Now that you know our topic, do you know what these body systems are? Do you? Hmm, let's find out if we're on the same page. First things first, kids. You must understand that our body is composed of different parts and organs. And each of these parts and organs perform a specific task. And together, they make our body work the way we need and want it to. Now, who do you think is the leader of your body system? Right! It's your brain! It commands the whole nervous system of your body. Next, put your hand in your chest. Can you feel a beat? Who do you think does that? Impressive! That is your heart! Your heart, which pumps blood all over your body, is a healthy muscle that leads the circulatory system. Now, let's move to the next one. Touch your arms and your legs. Can you feel those lumps of meat? Yeah, that's your muscle. Your muscle, which allow your body to move, works under the muscular system. Hmm, if those are your muscles, what is underneath them? Correct! Underneath your muscles are your bones. It serves as the frame of our body and protects our internal organs. Our bones are part of the skeletal system. Wow! We have so many organs that make up our body system. Now, those were just the stars of our body system. We haven't met their team yet! But before we proceed to that, do you know why we call them body system? They are called body systems because they perform a step-by-step -step process in playing their roles. Hmm, exciting, right? Sounds like teamwork among the organs. Come on and let us learn more about our body systems. Let us begin with the commander of your body. That's right, 
we start with your brain and the other members of the nervous system, namely the spinal cord and all your nerves. Now, remember kids, there are three essential parts of your brain. First is the cerebrum, which is responsible for your learning, voluntary actions, emotions, and sensations such as sight, taste, touch, smell, and hearing. Second is the cerebellum, which is responsible for the balance of your body. It also receives information from your spinal cord for accurate and precise motor movements. And the third one is the brainstem, which connects your cerebrum and the cerebellum to your spinal cord. Involuntary movements such as breathing, heartbeat, and digestion are controlled by your brainstem. And did you know that these movements happen even if when you're sleeping? Closely connected to your brain is the spinal cord. It is located just under your brainstem and is responsible for sending messages to the other parts of your body to act. It serves as a connector between your mind and your body parts. Without your spinal cord, you won't be able to move even a single finger. Ooh, scary. Then you have your nerves all over your body. They serve as receivers of senses and senders of signals to your brain through impulses. Once your nerves receive a sense of touch or temperature, it will inform your brain what kind of sensation it is. And then it will decide how your body will react. For example, when you touch something hot, Your nerves will send signals to the brain that it feels warm. And so, your body will avoid that hot object. Wow! Our brains are mighty, right? Without it, not a single part of our body will do its function. Now, let's move on to your heart and your circulatory system. Do you know the size of your heart? Hmm, let me tell you a trick to that. The size of your heart is as big as your closed fist. Did you know that? Now you do! Moreover, it is composed of strong and restless muscles responsible for pumping blood all over your body. Why restless? Because it never stops. It keeps pumping as long as we're alive. Two ventricles are responsible for supplying blood. These are your right ventricle that pumps blood to your lungs. And your left ventricle pumps blood which carries nutrients and go around your body. As your blood carries and delivers oxygen around your body, it also collects waste. The reason why it's called the circulatory system? Because it's a never-ending process. Blood flowing from the heart, around your body, managing waste, heart filtering the blood, and back to the first step. Isn't that fascinating? All right, let's have a brain break. We are down with two body systems and you did a great job keeping up. Now, 
try holding something pointy, like your pen. And try to let the pointed side of the pen touch one of your fingers. Eek! Which body system helped you understand that letting the pointed part of your pen touch your finger hurts? How about trying to remember something scary? Did you feel that loud beating? Which body system actively pumps blood that cause your fast heartbeat? Did you get your answers right? Good for you! We are ready to meet the other two body systems. Do you like to dance, play sports, or just move around. Hmm, what part of your body exerts the most effort? Very good! These are your muscles. Your muscles can be found all over your body. And they have three types. Cardiac muscle, which is located in your heart. Smooth muscles, which are the components of your organs found in your digestive system such as stomach, small and large intestines, and many more. These first two types of muscles are involuntary, meaning you cannot control what they will do, and they will continue moving as long as you are alive. The third type of muscle is the skeletal muscle. As opposed to the other two, these muscles are voluntary muscles, meaning you can control what they do. Try kicking a ball or using your legs or reaching out for the door. These muscles help your skeleton keep your standing upright and give you enough strength to carry things. These types of tissue work under the muscular system. Now, remember how your mom always tells you to drink your milk to keep your bones strong? Well, She's right. We have to keep our bones healthy because the main job of your bones is to protect your major body parts such as the brain, lungs, and heart. Bones form our shape. It is called a skeleton. Without your skeleton, you will just be a lousy muscle. Your bones allow you to move because it is attached to your muscle. And these bones work under the... That's right! Skeletal system! Whew. We've already talked about your muscular and skeletal system. Now... It calls for another brain break! Okay, kids, try to carry something heavy. Which body system helps you move and carry things? How about try holding your head? You know well that your brain is inside, right? Do you feel something hard? Which body system protects the important body part such as your brain? Did you get your answers right? Good for you! So, how do our body systems work together? Let's see! Your nervous system is composed of your brain, spinal cord, 
and nerves. They work together to facilitate learning and sensation. While this takes place, your heart from the circulatory system keeps on beating to provide blood throughout your body. The brain also receives a supply of blood from the heart. These two systems work in perfect harmony to keep our bodies moving. Then, there are your muscles and bones. Your muscles are attached to your bones that help you move and carry objects. But, hep! These are movements that you can control because you use your brain to think about it. Also, your bones protect your essential body parts to keep them performing their everyday tasks. So, even if you bump or get wounds or slip, your other body parts don't get much affected because your bones will get broken first. But don't wait for that to happen. Always take care of yourself. Wasn't that saying terrific? Today, we were able to learn that your body has body systems that have different body parts performing a systematic process for you to be able to complete a task. Your nervous system is responsible for your learning, sensation, receiving, and sending information all over your body. Your circulatory system is responsible for your blood circulating all over your body to deliver oxygen through your pumping heart. Your muscular system is responsible for your movements and gives you the strength to carry things and lift objects. Your skeletal system gives your body shape and protects your essential body parts such as brain, heart, and lungs. Finally, all your body systems work together to perform everyday tasks. And they are under the leadership of your brain. I hope you learned a lot today. Join me again for our next Scientific Friday. And together, let us discover things around us because science is everywhere. I am Teacher Janelle from Teacher Vival. Bye!